Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Safest Family on the Block. I'm your host, Jason, and joining me today is Jeremy Howden. Hello, Mr. Howden. How are you doing, sir? Hey, Jason. How are you, brother? Good to see you. Always good to see your face. Now, Mr. Uh, Howden has been involved in safety and martial arts in a number of different capacities over a very long career. He's an expert martial artist. He's worked as a bouncer. He's worked in security, has a degree in um, criminal law, was an officer in the Army. But for the last half decade, he's been a trucker. And he wanted to come on board today and talk to us a little bit about how people can stay safer around trucks. So first of all, I gave the kind of the the Reader's Digest version of your extensive security background. Could you talk a little more about why we should listen to you about safety stuff? Well, I think more it is, you know, you've got all kinds of experts that are in bars and out in the, the field but not on the road, you know, mm-hmm. and you and I, I've seen several of your podcasts and you and I've talked about this quite a bit. And I don't think people understand how dangerous these things are and the precautions they can take that are really easy. That'll give us, make it safe for everybody. You know, I think that's really the bottom line. here. That so, makes good sense. Just, just to edit something. Yeah. I don't have a degree in criminal law. I've got a degree in criminal justice, so right. I want to make sure I make that distinction. So right. no big You're not a lawyer. You work for no, a no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. That's done. So I, I took a look at some statistics about trucks and truck accidents, and mm-hmm. what's interesting is that while trucks represent about one percent of highway traffic, mm-hmm. and about that percentage of highway accidents, they represent one in twenty highway deaths. Okay. And a, and I think that's ex- because trucks have so much more weight and so much more inertia. And that's one misconception I think a lot of folks who've never been in a truck or driven a truck have. They think that these vehicles you're driving can maneuver like a Toyota Camry. Not even close. I, I, mm-hmm. I can't, I, there's, I don't have a, a good set of words to, to describe what it's like maneuvering one of these things. But I think if I was to tell people you know, like this trailer that I've got, the trailer itself is 53 feet long. The cab itself is probably, well, let's just say 20, okay? And then gross vehicle weight. So that's my truck or tractor, my trailer, everything on it, everything in the cab. I'm right at 80,000 pounds max weight. That's 40 tons. Mm-hmm. If I'm doing 70 miles an hour, I don't know how long number-wise it takes me to stop, but it's a really, really long time. And by that same token, it takes me the equal amount of time to get started at a traffic light or to, you know, I've got, I've got all kinds of room I need to have to turn, make a right-hand turn at, at an intersection, for example. And a, one of the things I see a lot is, you know, when you pull up to a crosswalk, typically a crosswalk intersection that's marked well, you've got three lines, okay? You've got the first line, then you've got the two that indicate the crosswalk. Well, you and your four-wheeler, you should be behind that very first line. So if, let's say I'm making a right-hand turn, that's designed, quote-unquote, to give me enough room to complete the turn, not taking out the telephone pole or the fire hydrant on my right, but also not to drive over you. And that's the one thing people miss a lot. That's the first thing for sure. Absolutely. I've um... Notice that, and I don't know the laws about it because I've only been, I've only taken lessons for driving my regular car. Uh, I sometimes see a truck that's in a two lanes going in the same direction and he wants to take a right-hand turn. The truck will actually be in the left-hand lane yes. because they can't make the turn from the right-hand lane. Correct. And is, is there a, uh, a legal guideline for that or is there a, or is it just good sense? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to speak to say that, I, that there is a legal guideline. There might be, but I will say that it makes good sense. You see a lot of trailers on the back that says, you know, wide right turns. And the motto is to swing wide. So if I'm in that lane and I want to make the right hand turn, I'm going to swing out to my left and then cut into the right. Mm. So if you're alongside, don't be alongside of me, no matter what, you know, unless we're stopped somewhere. But if we're driving down the road together, I've had, I've done dry van also. I do flatbed now. I look like a big skateboard. But I've seen other cars drive alongside me or other dry vans, like you see, that haul in all kinds of stuff, and they're trying to enjoy the shade. And that's, mm. you don't want to be there. 
you know, either be way up in front of me or way back behind me. But always give us room. If you see our right turn signal, if you see our turn signals on, we're not changing lanes because it's fun. It's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time and a lot of concentration to make that lane change safely so that we can get, get on what we're doing. I, I don't turn on my signal and get in front of you to aggravate you. I, you got to remember, I'm 10 feet up there. You know, I'm 10 feet high. I can see a lot of stuff you can't. Um, a lot of times there's a breakdown on the side, law enforcement on the shoulder, whatever. I'm trying to get away from that mess. So back to your question. Yeah, if I'm going to make a right-hand turn, I'm going to swing out. Pretty much any driver is going to swing out. So be advised when you see that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And just for listeners who aren't aware, you use the term dry, was it dry bed? Dry van. Dry van. And that's that's the kind of, the, the trailer that we kind of picture of when we think of a big rig. It looks like a shipping yes. container. Yes, exactly. And, and on some of those, some of those roads with a lot of wind, they act like a great big sail. Yes. Yep. You could go on, you could, if you're up in Wyoming, it's a really bad place to be, as a matter of fact, with one of those things, or even I-40 out of Amarillo. Um, heading into New Mexico, the wind gusts hit, you know, 50, 70, 80 miles an hour. And if you're driving a dry van like that, you'll get blown over. I've seen vehicles get blown over and they land on top of regular cars like yours because you're driving alongside of it. Don't, once again, don't stay alongside of it. Get away from it. Yeah. So it sounds like if you hear nothing else and remember nothing else from this interview, just give rigs a big wide berth on all four sides. Yes. We're Yep. Awesome. Yep. If you, as an example, if you pass me, which you're going to do, okay, no big deal. If you pass me, don't come over in front of me until you can see both of my headlights, the complete front of my truck. Because if you come over before that, you're cutting in too close. A lot of the newer trucks have a, what's called a Bendix system. And that is a cruise control system, along with other things that uses radar to maintain a safe following distance. Well, if I'm doing 70, you come over and get in front of me and you slow down to 68, well, I'm gonna slow down to 68. And then I'm gonna to wanna to pass you. And then a lot of times, and I had it happen today, I'm going around to pass somebody, oh, I can't have that semi pass me. They speed up, I'm like, okay, I drop back in. And so it's this, it's this game that starts playing. I don't wanna play a game, you know? I, I want to drive the rest of us out here we, that are driving for a living. We want to get to where we're going. We're on a schedule. We don't, we're not trying to make life difficult on people. But if, if you're going to be in front of us, go the speed that, that we are, so to speak, or be faster. Don't slow down once you get in front of us after you pass us. If we try and pass you, it's okay. Be patient. You know, you'll, you'll get there, I promise. But you're not going to get there if 40 tons lands on you. I don't care how many airbags you have. I don't care how many crumple zones you have. I don't care what you're in. We're going to win. And people don't, you know, people don't understand that these things will destroy you. There's, there's no, I hate, I don't want to say kill, but they will, you know, and you know, you might think, well, you know, I'm going to take you to court. Well, you're going to be a smear on the road and you're not going to get to spend that money. Um, and it's not, you know, my engine is a lot bigger than your car. You know what I'm saying? So don't, yeah. don't take the chance. Just get away from us. Give us room. Leave us alone. You know, it puts me in mind of uh, a lot uh, traffic on, officer that I had on the show to talk about uh -huh. things we can do to be, stay safer. One of his models was, you know, there's the law of the land that, that about speed limits, about how close you should follow and all those things. But then there's, there's the laws of physics. Yep. And yep. even if uh, as a driver, you're in the right about where you're allowed to drive or what the speed limit is or all of that, that means very little to the cold, uncaring facts of how matter behaves in the universe. Yep. And it's not yep. going to save you if you make a mistake. That, that, is, that example of cutting, too, cutting in too close in front of a truck. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's only so much you can do about that, even if you just stomp both feet on the brakes immediately. Yep. Yep. You know, and another thing I wanted to mention, because I've been thinking about this a lot, is for God's sakes, drive with your headlights on, especially mm. when it's raining. If you've got there's some some states have laws that if your windshield wipers are on, your headlights have to be on. 
Mm. And you've got to do that. And I can't tell you how many times somebody's been alongside me and I didn't know they were there until the last second. And fortunately, nothing bad happened. But if they had just had their headlights on, I would have known. Um, and also, if I'm, if you're going to, let's say you're driving and you're in the right hand lane, I'm in the lane next to you on the left hand side. I get up in front of you and I want to come over. Once you see that there's enough room, flash your lights at me. Just give me a quick blink, blink at it. I'll know that that's clear. I can come over in front of you safely. Everybody's happy. And then a lot of times you'll see me blink my lights at you, my tail lights. That's my way of saying thank you. Mm. Um, just, yeah. Um, there's subtle little communications like, that. oh, if it's nighttime and the same scenario is going on, don't flash your lights because those are your brights. And they're going to hit me in the eyes. And they're going to blind me. You know, some people will turn their headlights on and off real quick. I don't advise that. Um, but that's another good thing that, that can be done, but I don't recommend it. Because then your, your capacity to see is diminished. Hold on one sec. I'm going to grab headphones because the neighbor's blowing his lawn now. No problem. <laughs> what do you think of it so far, Jason? This is exactly the kind of stuff people need to hear, I think. Okay. I think it's important, you know, because it's exactly this is stuff we don't know because we don't go to truck school. We go to regular driving school. Right. Right. And then you get, you get so used to it that you don't you mm -hmm. don't think, of it, you know, um, so back to it. Um, mm -hmm. What's what, what's the next question you got for me? OK, so we talked about um, distance. We talked about coming in front. We have a few a few no no's we've already established and a few yeses. Uh, yep. Keeping your headlights on, which is good advice, regardless of trucks, it improves right. the visibility of your vehicle. Like you said, there's some states that say you have to have your lights on. Uh, yes. There's other states like my car right now. The headlights are on when okay. the car is on, unless yes. I take steps to prevent it. Right, right. You got daytime running lights. Yep. Yeah, and yep. it just it's good visibility. I remember an, an ad back when those first started becoming kind of standard on the nicer cars. Of somebody just driving along in the suburbs and all of his neighbors saying, hey, 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 you got your lights on. You got your lights on. <laughs> and pointing at, and of course, the tagline was, people will notice your car. Right. Uh, other drivers will see your car. And it is. It's yep. safer driving whether or not you're sharing the road with trucks. But any, I feel like anything you can do to increase the margin for error is going to help you on the road in general and with large rigs in particular. Because that's... That's from what you've told me, what I've experienced elsewhere. That's the thing that people don't get. Your margin for error is so much smaller than somebody driving a BMW or a Toyota. Yes. Yep. Yep. A um, couple other things that as, as we're talking, <clears throat> bumper on my trailer is, is a DOT bumper. It's solid. It doesn't fold. It doesn't absorb energy. Don't mm. tailgate. Don't, <clears throat> don't try and see how close you can get to the semi. And, you know, because you're going to, once again, you're going to lose. You're going to be like you're inside an accordion that closes. And it's mm -hmm. not the ending. Um, another thing back to if you're alongside of me as I'm driving, if I have a blowout, which can happen, chunks of that tire, if, if, I, if I maintain control of the vehicle, okay, but chunks of that tire are going to come off. They're going to hit your vehicle. They might come through your windshield. They might come through your window. They're going to damage your vehicle. They're going to damage you. Once again, don't stay alongside. You know, give us room. Get away from me. Just pretend you, you don't want to be anywhere near me. I remember this is a big one, too. I remember back before I started driving a semi when I was a kid, there used to be the shell answer man. I don't know if you know about that, Jason. And he would talk about traffic safety and things you could do for fuel and whatever. Well, one of the things he talked about was to have an escape bubble. OK, check your mirrors, know what's beside you, know what's in front of you, know what's behind you. That way, if something goes bad in front of you and you know you've got an exit lane or an exit space, mm. to your right, you can get over there and take that. So you have an exit. Yeah. So you want to maintain your awareness. And that's obviously harkens back to distracted driving. But know what's going on around you. Oh, and another big one. When you're merging, one, I don't have to move over. If I can, I will. 
but nine times out of 10, I guarantee you, if I'm doing 70 and you're coming on the ramp, pretty much any car out there to include uh, Saul Goodman's Suzuki Esteem on Better Call Saul can out accelerate me. You don't need to come to a stop. You, you know, don't stop on a, on a ramp, first of all. It doesn't say, it says yield. You know, it doesn't say surrender, mm. slow down, but don't stop. But I guarantee you, if you punch it, you're going to get in front of me. But, but ultimately, I think also you need to be decisive out there. If you make a decision and you're a four-wheeler and you're near me, make a decision, get up in front of me or get behind me. Don't stay alongside of me, you know, but make a decision. If you're merging, like I said, do it. You know? Just go ahead. You'll get in front of me nine times. Out of ten. Absolutely. That puts me in mind of when I was living in Malaysia, the streets there are insane. You got, <laughs> you got, you know, two lanes and as many as four rows of traffic. Right. Cars, tuk-tuks, motorcycles, bikes, goats, literally people riding bikes with goats. Just yeah. And if you wait for your turn, your turn will never come. Right. But if you move decisively with a kind of um, visible intent of what you're going to do next, mm-hmm. the traffic just kind of works its way around you and you get across the street just fine. It's, it was weird. It was a very kind of Zen Jedi mind trick-ish, but it worked. <laughs> And I, I feel like most people understand how to do that when they drive as well, to mm-hmm. be decisive, to signal their intent, both literally with the signals and just kind of in the way that you drive and move your car. Yep. And that gives you the information you need to adjust this gigantic battleship of a vehicle so it doesn't yep. bump into anybody. Right. No, and that's very well said. And I'm glad you mm-hmm. mentioned signals. When people are around me, God, for God's sake, use your signal. And if you're going to miss your exit, don't try and cut me off to get to your exit. I promise you there's another one probably a mile down the road that you can go and come back to. It is, it, it's, it comes back to patience. You know, mm-hmm. it isn't worth your life cutting me off. It isn't. Mm-hmm. It isn't worth mine because a lot of times like doing flatbed like I do, I'm hauling steel I-beams. Those things are razor sharp. They're 48,000 pounds. If I lock up my brakes and the securement process, the chains and straps, everything like that on it aren't perfect, it's going to come through my fiberglass cap Mm. at 70 miles an hour. It's going to kill me. It's going to kill my dog. It's going to kill everything in front of me. And Mm. it's a mess. And I've seen pictures. I've seen trucks that have been in accidents like that. And it, it scares the hell out of me. And that's why it's so important. Patience. Be patient. I promise you, your hair is not on fire. You know, and I and so many people, I think pretty much everybody, myself included, we're not patient with things. And you have to step back. You have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth me dying over? Is it worth my family putting me six feet under? You know, that shakes me up. I don't even want to see my dog get hurt. You know, you've met my dog. You know, but, you know, be patient. Don't I, there, you go online, Jason, you top in, type in, you know, four wheeler Friday, which is a part of bonehead truckers where you see all the idiots out here and you will see people cut across two lanes of traffic to get on the ramp in front of a semi. Yeah. And you're going to, they're going to get killed. And by the grace of God, the mm-hmm. ones in those videos did not, but I can't tell you how many times, it's happened and somebody gets killed and now you've got a widow and you've got an orphan. Mm-hmm. And it's not good. You don't need, you don't need it. You know? Yeah. And that reminds me of one of the very first safety facts I ever read that didn't have to do with uh, self-defense and crime prevention, which mm-hmm. is just to clean your car because yeah. that ballpoint pen in the back seat, if you get into a head on at 60 miles an hour, that's a, that's a bullet. Yep. And now yep. I'm just applying that same idea to 40,000 pounds of a uh, rebar in 20 foot lengths. You've just yep. created, you know, you're throwing four, four, 40,000 pounds of spears yep. forward yep. because somebody decided they needed to catch the, <laughs> catch that exit. Right. Right. And I, I yeah. think, so, you know, and God, you know, people put on your seatbelts, you know, I by and large, pretty much everybody's wearing a seatbelt nowadays. Mm-hmm thank god put on your seatbelt lock your doors um and do a walk around i do 
and any good driver is going to do what's called a, a pre-trip inspection or a post-trip inspection. We get out, we check our tires, tread depth, we check air pressure, we check fluids. At doing flatbed, I check and make sure that my chains and straps and whatnot are still tight. So what's on my skateboard, if you will, the flat deck like my hand, it's going to come over and land on you as I, as I make a turn. So I would say to anybody that anybody that drives any kind of vehicle, check it out, walk around it. Are, if your tires are low, if your tires are bold, you got to spend the money. You know, we truck drivers, we're subject to probably two, maybe more nationwide blitzes a year where we get pulled into way stations and they check to make sure we've got our glasses that are, if we need them that our medical card, we have to take a physical test every year or every two years, depending on, or sometimes even less, depending on condition of the driver to make sure that we can function properly, healthily, healthily. And healthily, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Works. You get the idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we have to, we have to pass those things. We, they go around and they will check every nook and cranny to make sure that our vehicles are safe on the road but that rarely happens to a four wheel vehicle, mm. you know, and they want to make sure at 80,000 pounds, 40 tons that we're safe to be near. And if we're not, they can shut us down right there. We get heavy fines. I mean, we're very heavily monitored by the government. Um, you go into a scale house, you know, the way stations that you see on the side of the road, they check us to make sure that we are not overweight on our axles, which would be the steers, the ones that make you turn the drives that make us go and then the trailer weight of the tandem, make sure we're not overweight there because that can affect the operation and therefore the safety of the vehicle itself. So we're, it's really strict on us. And I, it's important that everybody that has a car, not only the inside, but look at the outside every now and then wipe down your, your side view mirrors, clean your windows, um, make sure you're visible and that you can see, that things are functioning properly. Don't get stuck on the side of the road because when I go by it 70 miles an hour and I'm going to try and move over and that brings me back to if I signal, I'm not doing it for fun. I'm trying to get over because of something. If you're on the side of the road, you don't want me going by you at 70 miles an hour because that's a lot of wind. It's risky. I'm always concerned and I know my fellow brothers and sisters out here are concerned that your child might be unsupervised for that split second and dart out to look at what, and then they're in front of me. Mm. And it'll be like a bug hitting a windshield. It'll, even the thought about it breaks my heart, you know? Mm. And the same with your dog, you know? If, you're, if you see me, and that's another thing, Jason, if you see us on the side of the road, that's because we're broke down. We're not having a party. And we have roadside guys that come out and these guys are putting their life on the line because they're changing tires. And a lot of time they're in between the lane that you're traveling in the side of my truck, pulling a tire off or putting a tire on and you're going by in your four wheeler doing 80 or 70 or whatever. No, man, if you see that move over, slow down because you're going to kill somebody. I saw a guy, somebody got impatient, had to get around me. And I saw that they're going to hit a tow truck driver that was walking. And I tried to, yeah. you know, shimmy a little bit, give him a heads up. He kept coming. The tow truck driver saw what was happening because I hit my air horn. He jumped up on his trailer, on his, on his flatbed tow truck, and could have gotten killed. Yeah. And once again, it's because somebody was being impatient because, well, i got to get past yeah. the semi. It's not that important. Take yeah. your time. Take a, take a deep breath. You'll get there. And that brings to mind something else important about how much a, a rig will just uh, eclipse your visibility. So because mm -hmm. of because your field of vision is so restricted when you're behind a truck, it's important to slow down, as you say, be patient, make yep. the right moves that way. Now, yep. you brought something up a second ago that I really appreciated, and that's uh, a recurring theme in this show is uh, things professionals do to keep people safe that we can do as parents and as families. You know, mm -hmm. where a, a bodyguard will hop on Google Earth and take a look at the aerial view of the hotel neighborhood that they're staying at and use that to make good decisions about 
whether that's the hotel they want based on the other businesses around, if it looks like a sketchy neighborhood, if it looks like a good neighborhood. Right. And, uh, and they'll do that kind of research. And that's something parents can easily do. And yes. then you suggest doing a walk around to your vehicle a couple times a year or before, before every major road trip and just check the tires, check, you know, wash, wash your, re- your rear view mirrors, uh, you know, do all those things, clean out the car, do that little inspection. Now, mm-hmm. another thing that I know you, you have in that rig is you have a pretty deep well of safety equipment and maintenance yes. equipment. And yes. can you tell us what are some of the things that you, that you carry for safety that you think we should make sure we should have in our cars too? Oh, it's a great question. Um, you can get, you know, roadside flares. Um, you could get the triangles. You know, if I'm on the side of the road and I'm broke down, I have to buy law, put my triangles out. Um, you know, obviously my hazard lights come on. So those, I don't have any flares, but I do have my roadside triangles. I'll put those mm-hmm. out. And if yeah. what you want to think about is you want the triangles to go, if the road is, if, the, if you're on the shoulder and then you've got the grass, let's just call it the grass. Well, then you'd start at the grass mm-hmm. and the shoulder and then the middle and then to the corner of your vehicle. So it makes anybody coming up to think about going out to the past mm-hmm. drive. <clears throat> side yeah that's how you want to set those up okay Uh, that's how you want to do do the the triangles um you know when when you have inclement weather whether it's hot or cold you know i think some water uh protein bar uh things like that i mean i've got i've got my whole life in my truck you know and i think a lot of people don't know how much stuff we have in our trucks but i live in my truck i've got you know microwave refrigerator a smart tv um, you know, a nice mattress, all those kinds of things. This is my moving apartment. And it, that brings me to a, a thing I wanted to mention before I forget, Jason, is if you go to a rest area and you're in your four wheeler and you're in your pickup truck, don't park where the semis go. We don't have a lot of options out here. And it's funny because, you know, when you and I are trying to coordinate this call, I was trying to find a place to park. And there was nothing. And I went to three, four different places before I found this place. And, you know, we can only drive 11 hours a day legally. And so when, when you're taking that spot at a, at a rest area, that's a place I can't park now, you know, go park where the other regular cars do. Now, if you're towing something fine, no problem. I get it. That's where you should be. But if you're not go park over there with the four wheelers, don't try and, you know, oh, I want to park with the big one. Don't, don't do that. You know, it's mm-hmm. not where you belong. So that's another thing. And I can also see that being a safety issue, especially if you have kids, because you got your little car in among mm-hmm. these gigantic uh, drive-in movie screen sized vehicles. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And your kids could be running around and, again, passing cars, passing trucks, can't see you, can't see your, your kids. Yep. Now, on the topic of those road flares, uh, there's a product that uh, a lady from AAA turn me on to and that's what we have in our car they're about the size of a hockey puck mm. and they're led flashers oh okay and okay. they're they're orange and you know they do that blink 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 thing in the middle of the night i, I swear you can see it from space okay nice and you can get like a four pack on um, amazon for 50 bucks okay okay and so that so they're reusable they're very very bright way more visible than the reflective um than the reflective triangles. For one yeah. thing, you're coming around the bend and you can see the light flashing up even, you know, up over the, the trees or whatever's in the way. So you can okay. see them out for a long way away. They're really, oh. really cool little bit of tech. Oh, that's a great idea. Oh, I'm yeah. glad you said mm-hmm. passing. You know, a lot of times, you know, we're out here on these major interstates, major highways, and it's three, four lanes or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm in front of you and I'm, you know, I'm going to whatever speed I am. And I, once again, I can't go as fast as you can. And a lot of times people get impatient. And they want to pass me on the right. And I get it. And a, the problem is, though, is if you're the driver, remember, you're on the left hand side. If you're past me on the right. Well, now more than half of your vehicle has to clear my trailer before you can even see what's going on up in front of me. Mm. I may not there may be a stalled vehicle in the middle of the road that I'm clearing, but if you pass me on the right, you're going to hit. I had a situation a couple of months ago, I was coming over the crest of a hill and a car had died in the middle of the road right there. Oof. And I'm 
seven, yeah, I'm doing 70 miles an hour and all these other cars in front of me are doing 70 plus. And next thing you know, it was like little mosquitoes buzzing around my knees because the cars that were in front of me were trying not to hit that guy and hit each other. They were swerving and swinging all over the place, skidding in the whole nine yards. And by the grace of God, they all went their way and I kind of found an opening and nobody got hit, nobody got hurt. But that car was dead stop, broad daylight, no hazards on nothing. It may have just died. Just, I don't know. I called nine one one right away. And the lady's like, yeah, we're getting a lot of calls about it. I said, well, somebody needs to be there yesterday because someone's going to get killed. So that's why I would say, once again, if you're going to pass me on the right, not the best choice, but once again, be patient. You know, yeah. if, you, if it takes a couple of extra minutes, I promise you yeah. everything's going to be okay. You know, it's going to be yeah. all right. You know? And it sounds like if you were in a situation where that was necessary, the, the first step would be to actually counterintuitively back off yep. until you have enough visibility that you can make an informed decision. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's a really good way of saying, it. you know, maintain distance. You know, when the roads are wet, maintain more distance. And I, I, I find myself having to go, whoa, 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 slow it down. The roads are wet. The roads are wet. You're 80,000 pounds, you know. I don't want to find out how long it takes for you to stop. You want to see the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you increase. You don't want to see it decrease. When it's decreasing, that's that's a bad thing, especially when it's decreasing really fast. You know, um, but yeah, I, I, I think those are really valid, valid and important things. Absolutely, absolutely. So we we've been talking about gear a bit. You've got your flat. You got your uh, signals. Your flares or triangles or lights mm -hmm. you've got some spare food and water in case you break down yep uh, what are some other pieces of safety equipment we should carry along well you know if you really want to be super safe i'd recommend getting a high visibility vest mm. but just in case you find mm. yourself in a situation where you're broken down you can pick those up at walmart for next to nothing or any truck mm. stop to nothing um you know if you're changing a flat tire or something like that. I think that's a good thing to have. Um, and I would get, I would say that any occupants, let's say, Jason, you're out with your family um, and you got a flat tire, have everybody else get out of the car and go sit up away from mm -hmm. the vehicle, away from traffic, and let you do your thing. If you've got yeah. pets, put them on their leash, keep your hand on the, you know, keep the leash on you at all times, you know, get away. Mm -hmm let dad or you know mom whatever change the tire get everybody else away from the vehicle um sure. yeah pay attention be patient take your time you're gonna get there um sure. working windshield wipers, unless you do something stupid and then you won't yeah and boy you won't you know next time when you when you have a chance and this is for the people watching yeah. this and for you as well go stand next to a semi if you can yeah. You know, and if the driver says something, oh, you know, just say, I'm just looking at it because a lot of us, especially me as a flatbed guy, I don't want to see somebody around when I've got a load on my trailer because you, you're never sure what they're doing. But if you get a chance, just take a look at how big it is, you know, and look at where the inch is. Don't open up the hood, obviously, you know, but just take a look and imagine that when that engine coming through your door. Your engine won't protect you from my engine. It won't protect you from anything on my truck. 80,000 pounds at 70 miles an hour. 40 tons, people. I, I, it's like I was a tank commander of the Army. I will destroy everything around me and in front of me and behind me, whether I'm in my tank or I'm in this thing. Get, get away from me. Give me room. You know, I think that's the biggest thing. Turn on your headlights. Let me see you. Yeah. You know, don't sit there and enjoy the shade. <laughs> <laughs> so they just give you a lot of room. Make sure that yep. we're visible to you. Yep. Be respectful, you know, mindful of the laws of physics more than we are mindful of the laws of the, of the state you're driving through. Yep. And yep. that'll keep us safe. So, Jeremy, yep. I want to really thank you for taking the time for us today. But I got one more question before I, I let you get on with your evening. Oh, um, absolutely. You're sitting up here at 10 feet. You got a bird's eye view of everything. What are some yeah. of the dumbest things you've seen people <laughs> doing in their cars? <laughs> um, I don't know if you have an extra four hours at least. <laughs> um, 
I saw one time um, a rider truck, Reynolds van, whatever, was hauling a, um, had a car behind him on a, on a dolly, on a trailer itself. So the car wasn't making contact with the ground. There was a person sitting inside that car as it was being towed. Yep. I have seen people reading books while they're driving, literally. I mean, I, you know, I'll see people text him like, oh, that's really crazy. You're going to get killed. But I mean, you're trying to read a book. Um, let's see what else, you know, the, 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 the usual cutting me off and, you know, cutting other people off and being impatient, but the person riding in the car that was being towed, which is illegal. Um, good yeah, that, reason. That, yeah, that was a really good one. I've seen people, you know, in their RV, in their, their trailers, their fifth wheel trailers, being towed behind their truck, their pickup. I've seen people in those. That's illegal. Um, yeah, the reading. Um, I've seen people stopped on the shoulder and they're texting and they've got, and I can see them. They've got this look on their face like, oh, I'm doing the safe thing right now. No, you're on the shoulder. I'm going by you at 70 miles an hour. There's nothing safe about this. You know, get off the damn, go park in a McDonald's parking lot and send your text. <laughs> it's really that important. <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, yeah I, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. There's no getting around it. But yeah, we have reading and driving. That was probably the best one. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Yep. All right. One final question. And I know the answer to it, but I know that uh, every trucker I know likes sharing this answer. When a kid sees you and goes oh, like this. God, yes. Oh, God, yes. I knew that's what you were going to ask. <laughs> I've, I've had it happen a bunch of times out here unfortunately but not as often as i like mm. it and i love it it makes me and any other driver i've talked to more happy than it does that kid you want to make me because you know straight up i'm out here for hour i'm out here by myself for months at a time which fine with me that's my career that's what i do but we're out here for hours we don't talk to many people except on the phone we don't have a lot of interaction with people that's not a boo-hoo statement it's just simply what it is but when i see a little kid do that my heart sings. I get so happy. I, I want to start dancing, but I can't. I'm driving. You know, my puppy gets excited because she's like, daddy's excited about something. But yeah, that's, yeah, man. Even an adult, you go by and give me that, man, I'm a happy boy. Big time. Big time. Outstanding. Absolutely. So as parents driving around with a car full of kids, encourage it and Please. make sure, make sure the tradition is not forgotten by the younger generations. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you, Jason. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Howden, so much for coming on today, folks. Um, thanks for watching. Stay safe, everybody. We'll see you next time.